Well, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to listen. And also, thank you so much for the introduction to Helen. Um, yeah, it's really good to, to come back and, uh, and, uh, and talk about Northeast Queensland mineralization. And it's also very good to enjoy so many uh, excellent understandings on uh, tectonics and the structure evolution of uh, Northeast Queensland in the first half of the, of the seminar which really gave us uh, more ideas about the background of uh, mineralization. So, so today, uh, my talk is about tin and the, and the tungsten mineralization in Northeast Queensland. Um, this presentation is a result of uh, a project uh, funded by the Geological Survey of Queensland from 2014 to 2017. And the project leader was uh, Professor Zhou Chang. Okay, how to move on here. Okay. Uh, you may ask why we need to pay attention to tin and tungsten. Uh, one, of, one of the reasons is about criticality. In 2021, more than 70% of global tin and 80% of global tungsten were produced by a few uh, Asian countries. So from the perspective of uh, uh, supply chain, tin and tungsten are critical for many other countries. Another reason is, is about the price. Take tin as an example. Tin price has tripled in the past two years and increased nearly tenfold in the past 20 years. So this curve uh, shows the price change uh, from March 2020 to basically to this month. So a rapid, a very uh, rapid increase uh, indeed. So in 2018, a team from uh, MIT did a report for, for Rio Tinto about the, price, about the metals most uh, impacted by the new technology. As you can see, tin is on the top of the, of, of the list and the tungsten is also in the list. Uh, these different colors are the high-tech applications of, the, of these metals. Uh, several other uh, latest studies have also revealed the potentials for for tin use in batteries and uh, electric vehicles. So similar to other critical metals like rares, lithium and cobalt, tin and uh, tungsten are, uh, are also in the, in the 2022 list of critical metal, uh, metals published by the USGS on Tuesday, uh, two days ago. Therefore, tin and tungsten are also important for a sustainable future. So the Northeast Queensland, uh, Tian Tungsten Manor province is within the, uh, the range of Mossman origin. The Devonian uh, Hodgkin Formation is the main sedimentary rock in, in the region and uh, the Manor region is, is spatially, temporally and uh, genetically linked with the, uh, with the uh, Kennedy Igneous Association, which is uh, Carboniferous Permian age. And uh, there are, uh, numerous tungsten and tin deposits, occurrences, and, and prospects in Northeast Queensland, with tin reserve of uh, 239,000 uh, tons, uh, with, uh, and 71% and the of, the, of the resources are in, uh, in the Herberton district, and about 172,000 tons of uh, tungsten trioxide, uh, with uh, more than half of the resources uh, are in, in one deposit, in the Mount Carbon deposit. So this map shows the distribution of the tin and tungsten deposits in, in Northeast Queensland with their uh, tonnage information. And based on commodities, uh, these deposits can be classified into three groups, uh, tin dominant deposits, tungsten moly deposits, and also tungsten uh, dominant deposits. The spatial distribution of, uh, of, this, uh, of these deposits or groups uh, is marked on, on this map. So these are some, some photos from, uh, from several tin uh, dominant deposits in, in Northeast Queensland, including uh, uh, tin scarns and the regolite scarns from the Pinato deposit, which is not far from the Mount Garnet. And this is uh, a tin granite with uh, merolytic cavities and a sample from a cassiterite vein um, uh, in the Northeast Queensland. Wolfram Camp and, and the Banfield Hill uh, are the two uh, main tungsten moly deposits in Northeast Queensland. Uh, these are the uh, different uh, tungsten moly mineration styles, 
All bodies normally uh, contains both wolframite and, and molybdenite in the roof of the, of the intrusion. Alteration is, uh, is mainly grayson type. And there is also minor uh, tin or cassiterite in, in, in the tungsten moly mineral system, northeast Queensland. So smoke carbon is the largest tungsten dominant deposit in, in the whole region. This is the photo of, uh, of the open card. We, we observed four major quartz, wolframite, and the shellite vein rooms uh, uh, in, in, the, in the open bay. Uh, wolframite is, uh, is uh, typically uh, euhedral and occurs in quartz veins, while shellite occurs as pseudomorphine wolframite and cutting across wolframite as vein lights. So this is a plot of uh, geochronological data of uh, magmatic rocks and mineration with their uh, location information. Uh, the age of uh, kangaroo hail, uh, tin deposits, and granites are around uh, 345 million years. And the all around tungsten moly deposits is, is about uh, 340 million years. Uh, age from, from Herberton and uh, Mount Garnet uh, uh, tin uh, district uh, have, have a wider range, but the, the major tin deposits formed at around uh, 320 million years. The ages of uh, Wolfram Camp and the Bantry Hill tungsten moly deposits are around uh, 305 uh, million years, and the age of uh, uh, Mount Carbon tungsten deposit is about uh, 280 million years. The, the youngest uh, mineral system in, in the region is the tungsten, is the tin dominant deposit near, near Cooktown. Um, so, so overall, I, I think there is an episodic uh, feature for the, for the tin uh, tungsten and also tungsten moly uh, mineration in Northeast Queensland from uh, 345 million years to 265 million years. Uh, if we plot all these ages on, on this map, then you will see the figure on, on the right side. Obviously, from Kangaroo Hills to, uh, and, uh, and the Paluma to, to Cooktown, uh, there is the young entrant from south or southwest to north, northeast in, 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 the, in this region, northeast Queensland. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce the role of uh, volcanic rocks in Herberton district and their significance for tin tungsten uh, exploration. As we know, uh, different from many other metals like uh, copper and gold, tin and tungsten mineration are in favor of uh, inlet uh, series, highly evolved and uh, reduced uh, granite, which is also displayed by the negative uh, correlation between the tin and the titanium content in, in tin, tin granite uh, in this figure. Uh, the um, importance of, um, of granite for, for tin and tungsten mineralogy has been very well studied. Uh, so granite is an important clue for tin and tungsten exploration. However, if we go to a greenfield without any granite but plenty of uh, volcanic rocks, uh, can we get any useful information from volcanic rocks to support exploration? Uh, to answer this question, um, we needed to establish the connection between volcanic rocks and uh, granite in, in the tin and tungsten mineral systems. Uh, this model tells us the understandings on the relationship in, in a normal magmatic, uh, magmatic system. As you can see, the uh, eruptible, eruptible magma is on the top of the chamber and the granitic magma, which is in the lower part of the chamber, is less evolved. This is somehow different from our understandings on tin and tungsten granite as uh, the highly evolved granite is an, an essential precondition to form uh, tin and tungsten deposits. Therefore, uh, this model does not fit for the scenario of uh, tin and tungsten uh, mineralization. We, we sampled both uh, uh, volcanic rocks and uh, granitic rocks uh, from the Herberton uh, mineral field. So from the ge geological map, uh, there are different types of uh, granites and multiple types of volcanic rocks uh, in, the, in the region. So we have both um, exclusive and intrusive rocks in Herberton. And most importantly, there are many big and, uh, and small tin and tungsten deposits in, in such a small area. We, we used uh, different methods to, to date the, the age of, uh, of granite, uh, volcanic rocks, and the tin and the tungsten uh, uh, deposits. As you can see from, from this plot, the tin mineration 
happened during 327 to 318 million years, uh, while the tungsten moly uh, deposit formed during 308 to 303 uh, million years. An interesting point is whenever uh, we have uh, granite formed at, uh, at a certain age, there is always coeval rhyolite in, in the same region. Therefore, the volcanic and the granitic rocks have a close temporal and a spatial relationship. This is um, an important basis to study the genetic connections between them in a tungsten and a tin system. We measure half the mass tops uh, uh, of uh, these intrusive and uh, exclusive uh, rocks. Uh, there are two main observations. First, uh, the variation of, uh, of half the mass tops is a function of time. So from, from old to young age, there is a an, an co continuous increase in trend. And secondly, the coeval uh, granite and the volcanic rocks have similar uh, half the mass top comparisons. This means they may be derived from the same stops. Therefore, there is likely a genetic connection between the coeval volcanic rocks and the granitic rocks in both uh, tin system and uh, tungsten moly mineral systems. Uh, these are the uh, major and, uh, and the trace elements plots for, for the younger and, uh, and older groups of both uh, rhyolite and uh, uh, granite samples from, from Herbert. From the, from the uh, samples of the, for the younger group, it is clear that the, the rhyolite, uh, the blue uh, squares, is more evolved than the coeval granite, uh, the red squares, or at least a similar degrees of uh, a fractionation. Well, for the samples of, of the older group, it become, becomes operative as the granite is more, is more evolved uh, than the, than the coeval uh, rhyolite. This trend is even clearer in, in, the, in their trace elements plots. So the geochemical trend for, for the coeval uh, granitoids and the volcanic rocks are broadly operative, which is also evident in their metal indomates uh, as uh, tungsten moly deposits are produced by the younger uh, uh, groups of uh, igneous rocks and the tin deposit are produced by the older magmatic act activities. Uh, based on this data, we proposed a cartoon model to explain the difference for the granite and uh, volcanic rocks formed during 300 and 310 million years. The rhyolite is more evolved uh, compared to the coeval granite, which fits the exist existing model well and formed the tungsten moly deposit. Uh, the granite and the coeval uh, volcanic rocks of the older group are different um, because the highly evolved granite formed first, and then the co coeval rhyolite formed by the residual magma, which is less evolved. This model, I think, is useful for tin and uh, tungsten moly exploration, as we can uh, use only volcanic rocks to detect the potential of tin or tungsten moly mineration. Say if the rhyolite is highly evolved, so it could be from a normal magmatic system, thus a good sign for uh, tungsten and moly mineration. Well, if, if the rhyolite is primitive, then it might be good for tin uh, exploration. So uh, next, I'm going to explain why the, the yeast of uh, old feather has potential for tin, and uh, the yeast of young feather has potential for tungsten moly exploration. Uh, this is again the Herberton district. And the Herberton is somewhere here, and uh, this is Aserton. Um, can, the... can you wrap up soon, Yambo? Yeah, uh, very soon. Um, so, so we I just quickly show you the age. So uh, the the tin mineration from the first, and then the old feather bed uh, volcanic rocks, and then the tungsten moly mineration, and then the young feather bed uh, volcanics. So uh, a cartoon, a cartoon to, to, to display the timing sequence of the process. So again, uh, tin and tungsten, uh, tin deposits and the granites first, and then the rhyolite of the of the uh, old feather bed, and then uh, the tungsten moly deposits and the granite, and then lastly the uh, the youngest uh, young feather bed of volcanics. So so from the geometry of the of the of these uh, volcanoes, we can see the movement of old, old by, the, by the volcano was from, from this side to this side. It's the same for the young feather bed. So this is why we think it's possible to find tin deposits under the old feather bed volcanic cover and then 
conformity deposits under the young uh, volcanic cover. So here is a summary uh, of what I present today. I don't think I have time to read them now. And thank you all for listening. And uh, I also want to thank uh, many of my colleagues at TCU and also uh, GSQ and, the, and many other industrial collaborators. All right, thank you very much.